Okay, I'm going to do a quick rundown of how I do these fabric finishes on the little petals. Uh, the one I'm holding right now, this is a 1590B, uh, an MXR sized enclosure. Um, it's about on the 7th or 8th coat right now of the Mod Podge. You can kind of see, I'm trying to build it up to get it as level. I put a little cool sticker on there. Um, so I'm going to try to build that up as much as possible so uh, there's plenty when I go back and wet sand. I'll probably hit this one with uh, a clear enamel to go over it. just makes it a little shinier, makes the, the clear coat look thicker. You don't have to do that, but even after you wet sand you can kind of see some of these lines. It's almost like a grain or the brush strokes or whatever. Uh, this one I started last night. When I do these, I do absolutely no prep work. I'm sure you could if you wanted to send it down if that made you feel better. Uh, just open this one up, toss the bottom to the side. Uh, I feel like no prep work. There's there's still plenty of uh, tackiness to it. It's going to stay unless you don't want it to stay. Uh, I did the bottom of a 1590BB with this uh, and, and peeled it away pretty easily. It's just getting at those corners, getting it started. Uh, but this is several layers of the Mod Podge and two or three layers of clear. Um, and made it a little e more even on there. I was trying out some stuff with Sharpie. You can see my horrible hand right in there. Okay. Um, little material list. First off, uh, this stuff, the Mod Podge, here's an 8 ounce bottle I got at Walmart for a few bucks. Here's uh what is this 16 ounces for $7.99 at Hobby Lobby. If you're already in the Walmart go ahead and get it. It's there. It's a little bit cheaper. Uh, is it worth the special trip to go inside the Walmart? No. Uh, the price is about the same at Hobby Lobby and Walmart. Okay so uh, there's a hundred different kinds of this that you'll find at Hobby Lobby. Uh, you get the kind that says gloss. Uh, Okay. Uh, this stuff makes a mess, so you don't want to be using this on your workbench. You see here that I'm in the kitchen kitchen countertop. Uh, I, you, you would much prefer to mess up your wife's space in here. Uh, her purse is over uh, You can't see it's over here. Okay. We get a little cup like this, a little uh, fake solo pink cup right there so it doesn't get my brush all crazy. Uh, I just used the smallest foam brush I could find or maybe one size up. This is about 63 cents at Walmart or 36 or something ridiculous. Get a handful of them. Uh, you can see this one I've washed but it's still kind of tacky on the edge. That one's probably ready to throw away. Uh, got some 400 grit wet dry just for this purpose. So there's plenty. I think I've used this piece like for two or three. Get all this stuff out of the way. Uh, the cool thing about this is you can get all different kinds. You can get those swatches at Walmart like come in a pack for 97 cents. Uh, this material my wife used for something else uh, years ago. I think she's making the kids some clothes or something. I think this pattern she put on the, um, the end of some blue jeans or something to make some crazy boutique looking girly jeans or whatever so uh you see I've, I've cut this pretty rough anyway uh the material for these two were free to me huh my wife paid for them a few years ago uh what i do is just lay down the box and do the sides first make sure i've got plenty you can see there's plenty there um pizza's done do the sides first get it pretty tight and then when I'm, I'm pretty sure that's tight I go through here and you pretty much just do it like you're wrapping a present that's kind of a rough way to do it there you can see how these are okay I'll go right to it I'm gonna get a little cardboard in here so I don't mess up the uh, the kitchen countertop and I don't know if you can see this I've got my brush I've been going on this is a little jig or whatever I use to spray paint on. What I've been doing is uh, as I go through I just throw that right there and then just a little paintbrush rest. Okay. 
Put that to the side. Uh, that one's about ready for another one. But first thing I'm going to do, throw that over there. Get the goop out. Blah, 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 blah. And you want to, don't be stingy with this stuff. You want to really, really throw it on there. I'll do the box first. Get a good smothering. More is more. You said when you come up this way, you're going to have that on the sides. When you go this way, you're going to have it on this side. So try to keep it even, but it's not, uh, you know, especially underneath, you just want it to be good and wet. Uh, when you start doing the top, you don't need it to be that fancy or even or whatever. You're going to wet sand it down anyway. That's why I want to really build it up. Okay, we'll put that to the side. Now I'm going to try to uh, hold this down the best I can. I want to just put a little coat on the inside and is that necessary absolutely not i think uh the owl one over here the blue pattern it's the first one i did like that but when i was uh first applying the fabric and folding the corners and all that having the glue on the fabric already uh absolutely helped the fabric stay where i wanted it to stay uh you don't you don't have to do that if you're really trying to be stingy with the the glue stuff but again do not be stingy with the glue stuff okay there's way this this could almost probably do two of these 1590a's so i don't need to go as far as i'm going with the glue but okay put that to the side and if you want to you can uh get gloves on because that's going to dry up and just whatever here, here we go Throw it down the middle. Uh, one thing I will say, you see how I just kind of randomly jam that on there. If you use a pattern that's got stripes or a plaid or something where you have to keep it uh, straight, uh, don't do that. That's, that's going to be irritating. Uh, I, I have a pattern that's kind of directional that I want to use, but I've been kind of too chicken to, to use it as of yet. All right, now you see I've got a lot of of excess on there. That's fine. I'm going to want it to go in here and kind of keep inside that lip on the inside of the enclosure. It's going to help keep everything taut while I'm going over the 100 outer layers. Uh, I'm just going to take a razor and cut all that off anyway. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it being frayed and how I went through like a madman with my scissors. Okay, you want to get those sides tight. You can see the glue is actually pushing through the fabric. That is okay. Okay, make sure it's tight. Just kind of get the edges going. Again, this is just like wrapping a present. Uh, if you suck at wrapping presents like I do, you're probably going to suck at this. That's fine. Just do the best you can there. Get it as... Usually I get one side that really cooperates, and then or one end that really cooperates, and then I usually have one end that... Uh, Acts like a booger. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that end, although it's a little ripple. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the goop. Encourage it to stay where it needs to. I'm not being stingy with that stuff. You can tell it's all gonna dry. 20 minutes, it'll be clear again. Put another layer on there. Okay. You have a little time to work with it, but I want it to, I don't want the sides to lose its tackiness. And again, material cost wise, it's not very much. So if I totally goof up this little eight inch by eight inch square that I've got here, whatever it measures out to be, I just rip that puppy right off of there and start again. It's not a, uh, it's not like messing up when you're painting and you have to sand it down and all that effort. Oh. You kind of see when it gets wet, I've got a little ripple in there. These are so cheap you can throw them away. Uh, use it as a little roller pin in there. Just a little wrinkle right there. That one's probably not going to come out. 
that is fine. Uh, I can just about build it up thick enough to where that's not going to be an issue. Uh, but I'm not that worried about the ends anyway. I'm more worried about the face and making sure that I get it built up to where I can really go at it with the, the wet sand and make it look nice and pretty. Again, this looks kind of crazy. It looks like I've just glommed it on, which I have, but in 20 or 30 minutes, I'm going to come back and it's going to be shimmery shiny like this guy over here. So I'm not worried about getting it messed up or what. I'll just wipe my hands off now. Whoa, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and put a good layer on that. I really want this out of put a little left the paper backing on him because uh, the little dots were showing up on his belly I want it to be and it's going to make him kind of look floating around in there which will be just fine 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 I'm getting the excess out of my brush whatever If I can do this, chances are you watching will have no problems. Really hard to goof this stuff up. Trying to show you the inside. Well, inside's still dry in there. That's fine. You drop it and you get all kinds of stuff in there. Go over again. It's a nice haze on there. You can still see the pattern, but it's that's it. I've not done the bottom yet. What I usually do is just spray paint, get as close as I can. Uh, to matching the color. Um, I've not left one blank yet or, or bare yet, but uh, you know, chances are somebody's going to go in there and slap a big piece of Velcro on there, so who cares? And that's it. Okay.